Hello, this is Jeff. Uh, um, before we get started, uh, I would like to ask you to please go to the description and YouTube or Brighteon or SoundCloud and make a financial contribution to all of my efforts. This is, I mean, this is basically a full-time job for me. I'm supposed to be retired. Uh, um, my wife, uh, and if this, and and, the, and the, really, it's not even for me. It's for her. She would love for me to to stop doing this. And uh, so every time I tell her somebody makes a contribution or someone signed up, you know, to make a, a small monthly contribution on PayPal or Patreon or whatever, it makes it makes her feel like my all of, of what I do uh, uh, validates what, uh, what I do. Uh, obviously, I get four and a half million page views a year. I don't understand the lack of financial support. Uh, you know, I uh, obviously people appreciate the fact that I contextualize, you know, history, current events, prognosis for the future, China, the West, Asia, East, you know, etc. Uh, so uh, anyway, fun fundraiser, PayPal or um, Patreon. And uh, thank you. This is Jeff J. Brown, China Rising Radio, Sinoland, and um this week, uh, the CEO, he's re actually, he's retired now. I shouldn't say CEO. He's retired now. They actually have a rotating C <laughs> CEO system, which is quite, quite, quite innovative. Anyway, the founder, let's say the founder of um, uh, Huawei, Xin Zhengfei, gave a press conference, a roundtable press conference with uh, some invited you know, news agencies, etc. <laughs> I got a big kick out of CNBC. They're going exclusive interview with with the founder of Huawei. It wasn't exclusive. That's just not even the right to say that. AFP was there. Several agencies were there. Anyway, he went to Taiwan uh, in uh, Shanxi. I love that. That uh, my my wife and I and our daughter. Uh, uh, have been to tell you on uh, and my wife and I've been you know three or four times anyway it's just, it's it's a lovely area of of China uh, it was to open a new a new a new Huawei center in uh, Taiwan so he they had had this little press conference and this was his first press his first contact with uh, the the media at least western media uh, since uh, Joe Biden entered the white house and very typical this is this is the way this is the way the chinese you know operate uh in spite of being kicked in the teeth and beaten down by uh the united states government for the last <clears throat> four years um you know sanctioned and entity lists and bans and embargoes and you know everything else um which I've reported on a lot on China Ch China Tech Newsflash. Uh, if you go there, I've done a number of reports on this, and also on China Rising China Rising Radio Sinoland. Anyway, here he he comes out and he says he'd welcome a phone call from President Joe Biden. <laughs> wow, I would welcome uh, uh, s such phone calls and the messages around joint development and shared success. This is very Chinese. The Chinese, uh, you know, uh, you know, in terms of business and governance, think of, of a bigger pie for all. And I'm, I'm sorry to say, but just, you know, the, the West has gotten fat and lazy after 500 years of colonialism and imperialism, and their style of business is smash and grab, you know, zero sum game you or me, you know, you know, kill off the competition. And since Huawei is bigger, better, faster, and cheaper, the West doesn't even want to try to compete against them and ZTE, uh, you know, and, and, and a bunch of others. So they just try to kill them. They just try to just, you know, just, just to destroy them. He keeps reaching out for him. He keeps, you know, he keeps, you know, saying, I'd, I'd like to work with you. I actually wrote some, uh, an article uh, in an interview a while back, just look up Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple. Um, maybe a year and a half ago, I did this article called, you know, you know Huawei uh, is ready to you know, tie both hands behind its back by offering 
to, to license everything they have, all of their codes and their algorithms and everything. And Zhen Zhengfei loves Apple. You know, and says that the new Apple 12 is the best phone, uh, smartphone in, 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 on planet Earth. His daughter, who has now been kidnapped, uh, in, in my opinion, with my two exposés about uh, about uh, her uh, being uh, uh, on December 1st, 2018, she was she had a, she had an Apple phone with the, you know when they when they took all of her electronics. So he again in this meeting. Uh, this uh, this week, he again said, I'm happy. We're happy. We will license everything that we have to any company, uh, Western company that, uh, com that that is willing to work with us. Nobody has come forward, including Apple. Nobody. Uh, I'm sure that the that the the, the 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 geopolitical pressure is e incredibly intense. To not do that, because it would just help, it would it would help everybody, and they don't want to help Huawei, so they're not going to do it. Anyway, I, I want to point out, you know, in spite of all, you know, Zen is still re reaching out to the West, but this is the same thing that Mao Zedong did. I mean, from the time of FDR in the 1930s. In fact, even before he, when they founded the the Communist Party in uh, of China in in uh, 1921, he was reaching out to to Westerners, Europeans. You know, you know, let's work together, let's cooperate. But it, you know, the, because of the the brainwashing about about communism, no one would work with him. And so all the way up to Nixon, Mao was constantly reaching out. Uh, Zhou Enlai, his premier, they were constantly reaching out to the West, saying, let's work together. This is very Chinese. We may be enemies, but let's make the pie bigger for everybody. And he says here, you know, um, the U.S. wants to have economic growth and China wants to have economic growth as well. The problem is, is, is that the U.S. wants all the growth and no growth for China. So when you have this zero-sum lizard brain mentality that it's, you know, me or you, uh, the, 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 chan <laughs> the chances for mutual benefit and win-win, uh, uh, as, as Xi Jinping calls it, win-win um, cooperation is pretty slim. Um, and he's just saying, if we can expand, the United States can expand. But they don't want Huawei to expand because the United the West cannot compete against Huawei and 5G and and, and uh, et cetera. So yeah, they were opening a, a new lab in uh, Taiyuan. Search Google Android on China Tech Newsflash, and um, I've done a, several. Uh, you know, they, now Google's getting screwed because of uh, all these sanctions the entity list. But here, here, here's, a, here's something else that is very, very interesting about, about this press conference. That he, Zhen, is still, in spite of everything that's been thrown at him for the last, you know, three or four years, he is still has confidence and, and his confidence actually went up in 2020. This is very, again, very Chinese. In fact, I wrote in my books about <laughs> Mao, all the leaders, even the leaders, even going back to the be before the the Communist Party, back when there were emperors, the Chi the Chinese Chinese leaders have an unbounding faith in their people. They have unbounding confidence in their people. To do the right thing, and he's sitting here. You know, they they're, they're going to survive because he trusts his his employees. And then what's really interesting is is, is that he says he has confidence in his customers. You know that he, because because you know they they have stuff that no one else can provide. And uh, uh, for as far as far as five G and AI and and and, and some other applications. Another interesting thing, he will ne they will never sell their smartphone business, even though they have been <clears throat> really smacked down because they can't get the um, 
chips uh, from a TSMC in Taiwan uh, province, and of course, that, interestingly, that they were it was actually a, that company's actually was started by a couple of mainland Chinese guys. Uh, they did sell their Honor brand in November of 2020, uh, which is which is a good phone. Reuters uh, recently reported that Huawei was also in talks to sell Mate and P brands, but Jin said they would never sell its smartphone business, and nor would they get into the chip technology. But as the, nor would they start manufacturing chips. Uh, but that's a Manhattan project like the atomic bomb in the, the United States in the 1940s. And so they are, uh, um, but not Huawei, but they're, they're spent, Baba Beijing is uh, lining up billions and billions and billions of dollars, coordinating, harmonizing, cent you know, centrally planning out and mapping out to become self-sufficient in chip production in the next two or three years. So um, uh, Huawei and everybody else in China will be able to buy their chips domestically. <clears throat> um, and I have also China Tech News Flash, I've reported that on, uh, a lot. So for the United States, uh, it, it, it comes, it, it becomes whack-a-mole. You know, the, they, they're, they're, they're trying to kill their smartphone business. They're trying to kill their 5G business. Uh, but um, their Huawei is now moving into cloud technology, artificial intelligence, uh, smart cars. You know, uh, you know, autonomous driving cars. The United States can, can 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 continue to try to crush Huawei and ZTE and all the other secondary and tertiary. Um, uh, there's a f 58 or something companies that. That are that are on the entity list. Concept, you know, of serve the people. That was Mao Zedong. Uh, Mao Zedong's great mantra: serve the people, and uh, that's why Huawei is so successful because that's what it does. And then also, someone asked him about the, the sanctions and the and embargoes and the bans and everything else. Jin questioned whether Washington sanctions against Huawei benefit U.S. interests indicating that Britain's pressure over its American colony in the 18th century spurred the rise of the United States. He knows his history. Will the U.S. blockade today lead to an unexpected consequence? <laughs> he asked. Leave that up to your imagination. And uh, again, bigger, better, faster, cheaper. I, mean, <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. Biden's nominee for Commerce Secretary, Gina Raimondo, said she saw no reason why the Chinese company and its peers should not remain on the U.S. entity list. There was nothing's going to change because they can't compete. That's just all there is to it. Even Zhen said he thinks it would be extremely difficult to remove Huawei from the entity list. I will not say it is impossible, but it is extremely difficult. So basically, we do not have that expectation. We just want to work hard and we have and we have plenty of money and can hire lots of scientists. I think they spend something like 12% on R&D. It's what happens when you have an employee, you know, it's the it's the world's largest employee employee owned company. It's, it's not a there's there's no stock. You can't buy it. It's it's owned by the employee almost 200,000 employees. Again, he offered he offered to basically hand the West, obviously for licensing fees, but he offered to basically make the West just as competitive as Huawei is uh, by paying licensing fees. Uh, Huawei has an edge in both industrial applications, such as coal mines and seaports, as well as in consumer products, such as tablets and smart televisions. And I have a, um, you know, a, 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 a a sports watch from Huawei and my computer's Huawei. It, it doesn't matter what the West does. If it can't, if it, 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 it can do anything and everything it wants to try to kill Huawei and, and it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Interestingly, he did make a comment about his daughter, you know, who's kidnapped in house arrest in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, the case of Meng Wanzhou is a political maneuver operated by the U.S. There are some issues with how Canada implements that. We still believe in Canada's legal procedures. After my second expose, 
Um, I'm not so sure. I'm, I, uh, I'm, I'm not terribly optimistic. I think the only way that she's not going to get extradited is if the United States calls off the dogs. And I'm not even sure that, you know, that's going to happen with Biden in any case. So Huawei is never going to go away. ZTE is never going to go away. Um, and the United States and specifically in pushing Europe and all of its, um, all of its vassal states, you know, to, to try to try to shout out Huawei. They're just hurting themselves. They're just shooting themselves in the foot. But when you have that lizard brain, you know, uh, smash and grab, me or you, winner take all mentality like the West has, it's okay. I'll close out. Let me see. Huawei's revenue in 2020 reached a record 137 billion U.S. The uh, annual profit rose more than 10% to 10 billion U.S., but its year year on year growth rate dropped to around 11%. God, can you imagine that? How would you like to have a business growing 11% a year? This marks the second straight year that Huawei's revenue growth has slowed. Its annual growth rates in 2018 and 2019 were. Uh, uh, 19.5% and 19.1%. Well, golly, poor Huawei. This is Jeff J. Brown, China Rising Radio, China Land, and this is a this is also China Tech News Flash because it's we're talking about one of the of the world's premier uh, technology companies. Signing out. Thank you. China Rising Radio, China Land, and China Tech News Flash. Signing out. Please make a contribution to all of my hard work. Thank you.